Hello everyone, I'm Arthur from Blood Temple and today we are very honored to invite Oleg to Temple House. Yeah, and uh, before we dive into interview, uh, Oleg, would you like to introduce yourself first and tell people, tell us, reader, how you do and what's your background? Hello everyone and hello Blood Temple. It's uh, nice being here. Thanks for inviting. I'm Oleg and I work for Fulger Ventures and Fulger Ventures is one of the Bitcoin focused uh, venture capital funds operating globally. Uh, we've been uh, following uh, companies in the space since uh, 2018 and we have about uh, 60 portfolio companies that we are supporting uh, for building the Bitcoin and Lightning Network ecosystem. Nice. Uh, so as we know, Fulger Venture invests early in the Lightning Network, so you have probably seen its evolution closely. So for those people or community who may not be familiar with Lightning Network, would you, could you explain how the Night Lightning Network works and why it's so important? Indeed. Uh, I personally started to follow Lightning Network uh, since uh, 2017. And in a nutshell, what Lightning Network does, it uh, allows uh, for faster and lower cost uh, transactions over Bitcoin blockchain with uh, reasonable security trade-offs so that uh, you can actually effectively use Lightning Network when you want to move uh, value over Bitcoin faster than, uh, than on the main chain, uh, pretty much with uh, similar security guarantees. And what we have seen over the years is that uh, the Lightning Network ecosystem has matured. Uh, there are different implementations that are building on a common standard. Uh, so the protocol has been uh, standardized over the years. And the uh, presence of multiple uh, vendors uh, who have established themselves as providers of uh, Lightning Network protocol implementations and uh, developer infrastructure and application is a sign of uh, industry maturing in, uh, in this way. Uh, there are companies that are successfully uh, realizing business model and uh, are profitable using Lightning Network in their specific way. And there are also large companies uh, that are completely focused on building on Lightning Network, uh, such as, for example, the famous LightSpark that was founded by uh, yeah. engineers and uh, ex-executives from uh, PayPal and, uh, and Facebook. Uh, so uh, this uh, industry around Lightning Network is uh, growing and uh, Lightning Network is demonstrating what is typically called uh, product market fit. So it's actually finding real use where business models uh, that are profitable can be uh, implemented, uh, enabled by, by Lightning Network. Yeah, as you said, like time of, uh, flies and we have seen a lot of scenario for by using the Lightning Network. So like company and uh, people or uh, a lot of scenario. And you know, currently using the Lightning Network can be very easy and similar experience for user. So people just need to scan a QR code and without even knowing they are using the technology uh, like Lightning Network or Bitcoin. So given the current state of its development, what do you think is the next crucial step toward achieving the mass adoption globally? So one can think of Lightning Network as uh, evolving in a similar way that internet evolved when protocols uh, appeared on top of the base protocols of the internet and applications were built uh, using those, uh, those protocols. And uh, eventually, Lightning Network uh, creates this kind of goo that can uh, connect different parts of the Bitcoin ecosystems uh, operating uh, in different ways. Uh, because Lightning Network is not only a technology, yeah. it's also uh, a financial ecosystem with uh, certain economic trade-offs. And uh, in use cases where different sets of economic trade-offs uh, may be desirable, there could be other technologies uh, such as uh, like Fedimint or uh, Cashew or others, RGB, uh, Taproot assets. So they could, and also Liquid Network, uh, they could all interoperate inter between themselves using the Lightning Network. Because uh, as we've discussed, Lightning Network has established itself as a standardized protocol that others can build upon and use it to connect different systems. 
What is really interesting, uh, if we look a little bit further, is uh, one of the main problems uh, to be solved uh, around the Lightning Network is cost of liquidity and the ability to move uh, substantial amounts of value nominated in Bitcoin. However, there are technologies in development that allow uh, implementing an asset over Lightning Network, which is not denominated in Bitcoin, but can be denominated in something like uh, stable value, yeah. like a US dollar denominated stable coin over Lightning. So this could uh, open the window for solutions that would require less liquidity and less uh, management of, of liquidity, making Lightning Network really scalable and uh, operating uh, globally. Uh, that's it. Yes. And the next topic I want to talk about the Bitcoin, whole Bitcoin ecosystem. So in recent years, the Bitcoin ecosystem has flourished with many new solutions. And you mentioned before, and emerging like uh, Ordinals, Rune, OPCAD, or something like that. Uh, how do you view the fluctuation and development with the Bitcoin ecosystem? So again, if uh, we take a look at the history of internet, there used to be different flavors and versions of internet called intranets that implemented proprietary protocols, uh, usually promoted or belonging to different enterprises that were trying to solve their needs. And eventually what happened is uh, only the internet as a protocol became a standard integrated into all systems that are currently connected to the internet because it was a simple uh, to use, simple to understand and globally adopted uh, recognized protocol. So there is a lot of experimentation in the blockchain space with private blockchains, with blockchains uh, using EVM compatible systems uh, that are currently being uh, pursued. However, what we see is uh, some of this experimentation as soon as it finds a uh, product market fit or a useful yeah. use case, they understand that uh, moving this use case over to Bitcoin blockchain in one way or, one way or the other is uh, very advantageous because uh, of the way how Bitcoin is substantially different in its security model and ability to settle transactions uh, finally uh, without counterparties. So uh, we expect that uh, as this experimentation continues, uh, more, more and more successful experiments will uh, yield to more projects being uh, moved over to the Bitcoin blockchain as, as Bitcoin blockchain and its underlying set of technologies such as uh, like base chain, uh, lightning network, uh, uh, liquid network and others uh, continue to grow adoption and, and scale. Okay, got it. As you are a uh, Volker Venture side, you, are, you guys are willing to see a lot of the new technology here and uh, uh, someday they will uh, find a solution for the Bitcoin ecosystem. And I want to ask about Volker Venture and Lugano Plan B Farm. In addition to uh, Bitcoin ecosystem, but also support decentralized peer-to-peer -peer platform like Hole Punch. Recently, we have seen issue with centralized platform like Telegram have some issue. So could you share your thoughts on the concept of freedom, communication, and how decentralization can support it? So originally, what made us uh, interested in Bitcoin and the Lightning Network is uh, its potential to realize uh, a fundamentally different uh, neutral monetary system. Uh, enabled by, uh, by the properties of, of, the, of the Bitcoin blockchain. And uh, that is uh, something that uh, can also be uh, seen in a similar way uh, regarding communications. So uh, hole punch and uh, pairs is a set of technologies that allows uh, decentralized peer-to-peer -peer communications that can generate network effects uh, similar to network effects of, of the yeah. Bitcoin blockchain Lightning Network and, and the internet itself. Uh, it's uh, partially about uh, decentralization and, and freedom of communication, but partially it's also about uh, economic efficiency because most centralized communication platforms uh, incur substantial costs because they actually have to store this data. And these costs are not only costs of physical equipment and yeah. bandwidth, but also costs of compliance and responsibility of taking care of uh, handling the data properly on these platforms according to laws and regulations. Whereas in a decentralized platform, uh, 
a protocol or a messenger like like key.io or something uh, similar that can be built uh, using pairs and hole punch uh, can uh, be void of uh, those uh, overheads mm. uh, such as cost of infrastructure and cost of uh, bearing the responsibility for user generated content so this type of technology is again similar to to bitcoin and, and the lightning network uh, can potentially yield to network effects similar to network effects of, of the internet and uh, the messengers of, of the previous generations such as uh, facebook messenger whatsapp telegram yeah. but without uh, costs and overheads and, and disadvantages that those messaging platforms uh, inherently have because their operators uh, actually own uh, mm -hmm. the content uh, by virtue of owning the physical infrastructure where the content in, in host is hosted. So we are quite uh, excited and bullish uh, about the future of uh, decentralized communication technologies such as uh, hole punch and, and pairs, simply because uh, we believe that they can enable uh, a particular novel way of uh, doing business uh, in peer-to-peer um, -peer communications and in messaging and in transfer of data that uh, does not have the drawbacks, the economic drawbacks of, uh, of the current generation of, of messenger systems. And um, in a similar way, uh, a startup building uh, using uh, pairs uh, and, and whole punch could become like the next uh, Facebook or the next uh, WhatsApp or, or WeChat uh, but with a much uh, more healthier economic model, uh, yeah. not having to kind of like take care of the user's data or, or sell the user's yeah. data in a way to advertisers to, to be able to, to monetize, uh, to pay for, for the infrastructure costs, just because the infrastructure costs are offset to, to the users themselves. So we are very bullish about whole punch and, and pairs. Yeah. Amazing, you know, like after the Telegram issue, people uh, started to notice the, the, uh, the communication freedom and uh, uh, before this everyone seemed like uh, Telegram is the best solution for the crypto uh, space so yes maybe decentralized uh, platform is like whole punch and maybe uh, we can take uh, pay a lot of attention to you so uh, the next question yes I want you ask, uh, I want to ask with, with more projects looking to build on decentralized application and on top of Bitcoin. So how do you see the com competition with, between Bitcoin and the other blockchain ecosystem involving in the next few years? And, you know, maybe uh, at some day we don't need uh, other blockchain ecosystem. We just need uh, Bitcoin because Bitcoin have a lot of application on it. How do you think? In in general, in the technology domain that, that I've been following pretty much uh, my entire professional life, competition is a very important aspect of maturing the, the technology, especially technology that's based on engineering breakthroughs. Yeah. Because by creating competitive uh, variations of technology, engineers can learn uh, from each other and eventually the technology evolves uh, to, uh, to become better and more efficient at solving a particular uh, problem of the real life world so what uh, we are seeing is bitcoin uh, being uh, designed at the start as a very simple uh, to build and to understand a set of cryptographic and mathematical rules that are implemented in uh, open source code readable by uh, anybody who is interested uh, has a fundamental competitive advantage yeah. uh, being uh, the first and and the simplest of, uh, of blockchain implementations. Whereas some other blockchains have chosen uh, a path of a very complex uh, design mm -hmm. that makes uh, code uh, review difficult and uh, uh, may have a lot of features that are not necessarily translated into real life uh, value, which uh, is probably going to make uh, these blockchains uh, a bit more like difficult to, to sustain uh, what, what they have built and to find uh, a reliable product market fit. So we believe that we will see more uh, oscillation towards Bitcoin and uh, successful uh, applications uh, once they hit kind of like an engineering limit or a cost limit or like a social scalability adoption limit. Uh, by, by, by which I mean uh, ability of billions of people to, to transact with uh, 
with a particular application using a particular uh, blockchain technology, so to say. So as these limits become uh, understood, uh, successful technologies will and applications will eventually move over to, to the Bitcoin uh, technology stack. And we already see this, this happening in the recent wave of uh, uh, technology innovation that, that you have mentioned. And uh, eventually uh, we, we see more and more applications uh, being built on Bitcoin, but Bitcoin and uh, different layers on top of it uh, could also learn uh, from what is happening in the other uh, layers and in the other implementations and basically port and adopt uh, the most interesting uh, engineering concepts, uh, but making them again like simple and uh, integrated into uh, the fundamental base that, that Bitcoin provides as, as the most secure and the most mature uh, blockchain. Nice. I think uh, that's a good uh, note and I'm here and thank you Ola for uh, giving us like deeper understanding of where Bitcoin is head where is Bitcoin heading. So thank you uh, Oleg again joining this interview and enjoy the night event. Thank you very much for thank having you. me. It thank has you. It's been a real pleasure. Thank okay. you. Thank you.